praise the Lord, Elevate Nation. Hallelujah. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised this morning. To all of our online worshipers, welcome to the high time. And to our in-house worshipers, welcome to the high time to you as well. Isn't the Lord good? Won't you give him a hand clap of praise this morning for all that he has done? Glory to your name, Lord. Be high and lifted up in this place today. Hallelujah. Our scripture reading this morning is coming from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. And I'm reading to you from the New Living Translation. My child, never forget the things I have taught you. Store my commands in your heart. If you do this, you will live many years and your life will be satisfied. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people, and you will learn a good reputation. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord is blessed. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, we give your name praise. We give your name glory this morning. We give your name honor, hallelujah, because you're so worthy of praise, hallelujah. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, we ask for the forgiveness of our sins, hallelujah. We ask that you would cleanse us from all unrighteousness, hallelujah, creating us a clean heart, oh God, and renew the right spirit with us. And so, Father, we thank you, hallelujah, for the forgiveness of our sins because you are faithful and just to forgive us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And so, Father, we ask that you would let your Holy Spirit come into this place and rest upon us. Have your way today, Holy Spirit. We give you honor and glory. Hallelujah. We thank you for all your blessings, oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you for meeting every need in the house. Hallelujah. You have been so good to us. You have kept us. Hallelujah. You've been so merciful and so kind. And for that, we give your name the glory. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. You are worthy of the praise this morning. Thank you, oh God, for keeping us in your mighty hand. Hallelujah. Because you are great, God, and there's none like you. Hallelujah. And so, Father, we're so careful to give your name and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, come on and clap your hands and bless the Lord this morning. Come on and clap your hands and bless the Lord this morning. If he's your shield around you everywhere that you go, I just need somebody to shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, if you know the Lord is with you everywhere you go, clap your hands like this. Come on, come on. I just need some people that believe with me this morning. Come on. Raise them up. Come on.
Come on, tell somebody goodness and mercy is following me everywhere that I go. Do you know that? Do you know God's grace and his mercy is following you everywhere? Come on, lay your hand on yourself. Say, that's my testimony. If you're watching online, even in your household, lay your hand on yourself and say, that's my testimony. He is watching over me everywhere that I go. Anybody glad to be alive this morning? Come on, don't fool me. Are you glad to be alive this morning? Hallelujah. And listen, if you can't thank God for nothing else, you can thank him that you're saved, that you're safe, and that you are alive in Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands one more time. Hallelujah. To all of you who are watching online this morning, welcome to High Time Worship. This is your time to be an evangelist, to like, comment, tag, and share. And if you're watching online, make sure that nobody misses the word of God this morning. Let's pray this morning and ask God's blessings over the word that we're getting ready to hear. Dear Lord Jesus, how we thank you and praise you for the entrance of your word is what gives us light. And with that illumination, we can have revelation. That revelation, we can have application. We are so thankful for your grace. We are so thankful for your mercy. It is because of your mercies we are not consumed. Great is your faithfulness to us. And every time we wake up in the morning, we get an opportunity to see your new mercy. We can say unequivocally, if it had not been for you on our side, none of us would be where we are right now. You look beyond our faults tended to our needs and for that we are so grateful and our testimony is that goodness and mercy is following us everywhere that we go <laughs> you're ordering our steps and you're directing our path God we don't take that for granted we are thankful this morning for your goodness and your grace now God it's time for preaching and I pray that the entrance of your word will give us light that you will sit on every seat, speak to every spirit, minister to every need, heal every hurt. I pray that your revelation will be brought forth on every Android, every iPhone, every smart computer, every smart television. I thank you huh, that your word is what's keeping us each and every day. It's in Jesus' name. We love you and we praise you. Amen and amen. Come on. Just tell somebody in the sanctuary, say, goodness and mercy is following us everywhere that we go. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. While you're standing, I want you to get your Bible and go with me to Luke's Gospel, Chapter 9. And we're continuing the series this morning entitled The Rules of Engagement. We're taking the word of God this month we're taking the word of God and if you're in the sanctuary come right on up to the front rows if you will God bless you today come right on up uh, there's plenty of room this morning uh, we are continuing our series entitled the rules of engagement and we're studying the life and teachings of Jesus Christ and his interaction with people and how he engaged in order to win disciples y'all I believe this next season that we are in Attendance is not going to be the highlight of ministry. It's going to be a byproduct of ministry, but engagement is going to be a priority of ministry. And I believe that engagement is going to drive our enthusiasm and our attendance. And the more that we are committed to the cause of Christ, we are conscious about our responsibilities in the kingdom, we'll be able to see and know what it is that God has in store for us look at somebody and just point at them and drop this in the comments if you're watching online and say there are rules to this come on testify to somebody say there are rules to this this kind of living this kind of consciousness this kind of thinking this kind of embrace for this season that we're in we've got to be able to study what Jesus really said 
With that in mind, I want to invite you to Luke's Gospel, chapter number 9. Luke's Gospel, chapter number 9. And uh, I want to begin reading at verse number 1. When Jesus had called the 12 together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He told them, take nothing for your journey, no staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra shirt. Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that town. If the people do not welcome you, leave their town, shake the dust off of your feet as a testimony against them. Verse 6 says, so they set out and went from village to village, proclaiming the good news it is and healing took place everywhere amen lay your hand on yourself and say i have been chosen yeah i've been chosen that's what i want to preach today i've been chosen you may be seated in the presence of the lord saints this next season of life and ministry is bringing great challenge to us as we navigate through uh, the peril and paralysis that this pandemic has produced for all of us. There are so many questions about what kingdom-minded ministry will look like in the days to come. And in my prayer time, I ask God to give me uh, a winning strategy for bringing people uh, of God together while we are yet socially distanced and challenge doing ministry with limited means of fellowship and to be sure about it we cannot allow our failures to make adjustment to uh, cause us to misappropriate our mandate for ministry and out of all we've ever experienced these last 18 months we must still acknowledge the call of God upon our lives and answer the question Lord what is our assignment now? Y'all, I'm convinced that God still wants to use us to get his purpose accomplished in the kingdom. And, and, and the more I study and the more I pray, I, I see how mystical uh, it is that how, how God uses certain individuals to accomplish specific tasks on his agenda. Y'all, God has a peculiar way of anointing our afflicted areas and bringing supernatural testimonies out of our turmoil. I'm literally preaching to somebody, you're in here or either you're watching online, and your testimony is he recycled your pain to bring testimony to the forefront of your life. And folks are looking at you and they're wondering, what's so special about you that God will choose you for that kind of victory? And they don't even know you're trying to figure it out yourself. All you know is, if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, your testimony is, Pastor Jay, I don't know where I would be. They don't realize that behind your scars and behind your pain and behind your praise and behind your hallelujahs, I'm coming to get you, there are still some wounds that haven't stopped bleeding yet. Because the truth of the matter is, having a call on your life can leave you, as John Claypool once wrote, as a wounded healer that has to lead while you're bleeding. And I came to encourage somebody this morning who's building others while you're still broken. I'm, I'm going to give you a transparent moment at the onset of this message to be truthfully transparent because there is transformation in transparency. Someone's deliverance is in the dilemmas that you have survived. And here's your shout cue. Even out of all of what God knows about you, he still wanted to use you anyway. Who, who can testify to that and say, you know what, Pastor Jay? I haven't been perfect, but I've been faithful. And out of all that I have experienced in my life, every place I've 
fail, God recycles it. And the good news is he's using me anyway. Even though he hates our sin, he's in love with the sinner. And there Jeremiah says it like this. He says in chapter 3, verse 14, Oh, black backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you. And I will take you one of a city, two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. Uh, aren't you glad that God is married to the backslider? God knows the things that if people knew, they would throw you away. But God knows all of my corrupt conduct, and yet he still did not cancel my calling. I'm going to give you 15 seconds right now to shout because he never gave up on you. Who, who's the, who, who got that testimony that can say, God never Never gave up on me even in a pandemic he shut us down to put us ahead and the question becomes how do we maintain our dedication to God while all of what we know about ministry seems to be changing in case you've been wondering what comes next let me just tell you it's time for us to capitalize on our calling uh, 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 I believe that God wants us to use this season to make the most out of every opportunity that he has given us to make an impact on the lives of people that we come in contact with every day. That's what Jesus did. Jesus made the decision that whoever he came in contact with would not leave him the same way that he found them. Aren't you glad? Oh my God, that Jesus has given us that example. He said, listen, do everything you can to make Make me look good in this season uh, uh, because I ain't never left you looking bad after all you have survived ain't, ain't nobody talking to me here come on lay hands on somebody you came to church with and say let's make God look good in this season drop that in the comments and say I've been chosen to make God look good because he never left me looking bad after all that I have survived uh, I have been chosen to tell somebody just how good God has been to me. That's my introduction. Let me hurry on to my argument this morning because it's an interesting argument and I have studied this and labored with this all week long and I, I just gotta, I gotta get it out. It's pregnant with all kinds of potential and possibility and I want to provoke your thought this morning. I hope you brought your thinking to this live this morning. I hope you brought your thinking cap into the worship this morning because Luke chapter 9 opens with the selection of 12 ordinary individuals that Jesus chooses to be a part of his extraordinary team. See y'all, extraordinary ministry can happen when ordinary people realize what can be accomplished when we learn how to work together. And the context is that one chapter prior to this, in Luke chapter 8, we see that Jesus calms a storm on a raging sea. We also see that he moves on in Luke chapter 8 to cast demons out of a man who had a uh, demonic spirits. He, we, we also see in Luke chapter number 8 that he heals a woman with the issue of blood for 12 years, all while simultaneously raising Jesus. Jairus' daughter from the dead and Jesus begins to impart his spirit into those who are connected with him he wants us to understand that as long as he remains with us in the natural in the earthly body he is limited by time and space he, he wants them to understand that as long as I stay here I cannot be in Jerusalem and Capernaum at the same time I can't be at the Sea of Tiberias and the Sea of Galilee at the same time I cannot be in Jericho Lord have mercy and be Lord have mercy in other places that I physically need to be because I'm limited by time and space but when I leave I'm going to leave you a comforter that can be everywhere at the same time there has to be some folks beside me that have some power to effectuate change in the earth if it's just about me then the mission will be aborted but if I put my spirit in you 
then greater works will you do. Come on, come on, lay hands on yourself. Say, I've been chosen to do greater works. That's where we're so busy missing it at in the kingdom. That's the reason why we don't shout over these kinds of messages because we're so busy trying to be impressionable that we want everyone to see us be spectacular while everybody else in our circle is subpar. But for the kingdom to advance, we all need to be operating in that same power. In order for the kingdom to advance, uh, uh, the kingdom, y'all, has always been and will always be bigger than any one person. Oh, I wish I could preach this this morning. I, I, I wish somebody felt like I felt this morning. We've all been chosen. Even Jesus in all of his power realized that we're better when we do it together. That's a good place to shout. Drop that in the comments if you're watching online and say it's better if we do it together. He shows us in Luke 9 more rules of engagement this week. And I thought we'd talk about it because many of us, you're, you're at your best when you pull the best out of people that are in your circle. I don't know how you feel about it, but my declaration is my whole squad winning in this next season. I, I, I don't want to win alone. I, I want everybody within my sphere. I, my family going to win. My children are going to win. Uh, my grandchildren are going to win. My co-workers are going to win. If you in my cubicle, you in my section for winning. Everybody connected to me in this next season is going to be a winner. Matter of fact, make sure you ain't sitting on the road with no losers this morning. Make sure you sitting there with somebody that's anticipating victory. And make sure you ain't sitting with nobody that just came to be negative and, and with a defeated attitude. Uh, make that declaration even in your household this morning that everybody in my house, wake your whole house up and say hey, 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 from this day forward everybody connected to me is going to win. Uh, everybody connected to me is going to win. And we see this morning when Jesus encounters those in which he engages, uh, he wins their influence. And y'all, that's what kingdom is really all about. It's really all about huh, winning influence. And now I'll prove it to you. I prove it to you contextually this morning because the first thing we see in this passage this morning uh, is the distribution of power. Yeah, that's the first thing we see, the distribution of power. Come on, let's read Luke 9 together so that we can get the proper interpretation so that we can have the proper revelation and we can leave here with the proper application. How about we do that? All right, Luke chapter 9, verse number 1. I want you to see this, and we're going to read it chronologically so we don't miss none of the revelation. Here it is. When Jesus called the 12 together, he gave them power. Let the church say power. And authority, here it is, to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. Ah, I'm going to read that again. When Jesus called the 12 together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And now, now the first thing I need you to see about this text is, chronologically, first thing is, he called them together. He called them strategically at one time. And the reason he called them simultaneously was so that he could eliminate superiority amongst them. He called them at the same time so that they would appreciate one another's strengths and encourage one another in their weaknesses. He called them together so that they would understand the power in serving together. Then he delegates his divinity and gives them dominion over demons. He calls them together to give them power and authority. 
Uh, uh, and, 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 and for so long, we, we associate power and authority as if they're the same thing. In actuality, they're different. Power is the ability to do or to act. It's the capability of doing or accomplishing something. But authority is the power to determine, to educate, or otherwise settle issues or disputes. Jurisdiction, the right to control, command, or to demand. The next thing I need you to see in this passage is that being a disciple of Christ is not validated until you've got to deal with with some demonic forces. Uh, we don't know you got the power because of the things you say. We know you got the power because of things that are said around you, but they don't affect your authority. Y'all hear me? Uh, he chooses them to empower them, but he also chose them because somebody had to be equipped to deal with the demonic. Now, please understand, this is why our intimacy with God must be intact because you cannot get the power and the authority to handle demonic activity if you have not spent time with God. Spending time with God is where you get the power to address things in the spirit that you can't deal with in the natural. And some of us gonna mess this thing up because you think this fight is a fleshly fight. You think it's about who done made you mad and who done got on your nerves and who didn't do you right. When the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty to God through the pulling down of strongholds and when you choose to be reactionary instead of being proactive in the spirit then you can't rise above it while you're going through it you'll be affected by everything that comes your way but when you spend intimate time with God that's why I pray early in the morning because when I get to 12 o'clock in my day if the enemy tries to disrupt my day I have the authority to say listen me and God already talked at 7 this morning huh? and he didn't give me any indication that by 12 noon my day would be thrown off huh? so if anybody gonna be an intimidated you gonna be intimidated huh? cause me and God already done had a conversation about how I'm gonna win my battle huh? come on look at somebody say that's how I fight my battles huh? I fight my battles in the spirit I don't fight this fight in the flesh but I fight it in the spirit maybe our problem is we're trying to fight demons with no divinity and part of your calling huh, is not to avoid demonic activity huh, but you've been called to address demonic activity but you can't overcome what you're not equipped to confront it's bad to be in a confrontation where there's no impartation uh, uh, and, and let me just tell you what a demon is so you'll know how to recognize it because demons don't uh, uh, stand out with pitchforks and long tails a, de a demon is any nature that harasses the spirit that God put on the inside of you uh, uh, come on look at your devil say you ain't gonna harass me today uh, you, ain't gonna, you ain't gonna throw me off my square today you ain't pulling me I ain't laying my religion down if I lay my religion down I may not be to pick it back up. I'm going to call that thing which is not as though they are and declare yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I ain't going to fear no evil for thou art with me. We just got done talking about his grace and his mercy is with us. Well why are we so afraid when we come in contact with demonic activity when he has given you power and authority to cast out every demon and devil. Come on, look at somebody say, I got power and I got authority. Uh, you don't know the difference. A police officer has power and he has authority. Power is on his left hip. If you come the wrong way, they have been empowered to shoot you. Y'all ain't hearing me here. But authority is different. Authority is not the gun on your hip. That's power. But the authority is the badge on your chest. You can stand out in the middle of a road with a Mack truck coming your way with the authority on your chest and say stop right there. Who am I talking to that got the authority to back up some Mack trucks in your life? You got the authority to stop traffic in the middle of a raging road and say though he slay me yet will I trust him. Y'all depression 
and je- I'm preaching better than you responding. And jealousy and grief and envy and lust and covetousness and unforgiveness are all demonic spirits. Did you hear me? I said depression and jealousy and envy and lust. That's demonic spirit. Jesus knew when he called them together. They couldn't do this work before uh, getting that stuff off of them. So he gave them, here it is, power, dunamis, authority, excusia. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, gives them, he, he gives them the distribution of power. That's my introduction. Now, here's my real point, okay? Uh, my daddy used to say, before I preach, I want to say something. That's what I just said. Now I want to preach a while. Hmm. Uh, here's, 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 one real, here's one real point to this whole sermon. If you can get this, you'll be able to be blessed today. And here it is. He deploys his disciples to preach the gospel, to proclaim. He sent them out. I'm in verse 2. Sent them out to proclaim. Watch this. The kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Now, I want you to notice the chronological order of the text. First, he gave them power and authority. Then he sends them out to preach. Here it is, the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. The word preach comes from the original word caruso. It means to herald or uh, proclaim the truth in public. The text says he sent them out to preach the kingdom. Don't miss this now. He sent them out to preach the kingdom of God. Got one real punchline to this sermon. It lies within the theological struggle I had with the text. When I got to this, I said, wow, Jesus commissioned them to preach the kingdom of God. And the primary reference for the correct interpretation of the passage is the interrogation of the term kingdom of God. Have you ever really thought about that? What exactly is the kingdom of God? Because to misappropriate that answer is to misinterpret this entire passage. And to make matters worse, Jesus gives them further instructions. He says, and, and, and while you're going out there to preach, take nothing for your journey. Translation, operate without any resources. Don't take no staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra change of clothes. He says, I'm in verse 4, and whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave. Lodge where there are no relatives. <sighs> he said, because this journey is not going to be a journey of the familiar. It's going to be the journey of the unfamiliar. Hmm. Maybe that's why we're so uncomfortable with church right now, because God is calling us to the level of unfamiliarity. <sighs> Huh. And then he says, and if they don't accept you, shake the dust from your feet and, and, and keep it moving. In other, words, in other words, part of your assignment in this season is to anticipate being rejected. Ah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you can't be perfected until you've been rejected. Oh, y'all making me preach so hard today. Okay, okay. And, and, and as if the assignment was not tough within itself, to me there's a greater issue, Deacon Greg, and the greater issue is uh, what were they exactly supposed to be preaching? In fact, what exactly did they preach? Because this is Luke 9, and there has been no Good Friday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There has been no crucifixion. There has been no Easter Sunday. There has been no Pentecost Sunday. So if they can't preach, he died. Y'all ain't hear me here. And they can't preach, he rose on the third morning. They can't say, ah, God, the power ain't here yet. And they can't preach because they haven't been to Pentecost. So then the question is, what was the message of the kingdom? Uh, there's a primary reference of the interpretation of scripture uh, called the law of first mention. That if we're going to understand what Luke 9 says, we got to go back and see what Luke chapter number 4 says. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me here. Uh, uh, so let's go uh, to Luke 4 and see what Luke 4 says. Because Luke 4 says something interesting. And Jesus is in the temple preaching. And Jesus is preaching the message of the kingdom. 
And in Luke, no, just put it up on your own phone. I promise it's there. Luke chapter number four, and Jesus is teaching in there, and he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Uh, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel, to set at liberty those who are in captive, the recovery of sight to the blind. He, he has sent me to preach good news to the poor uh, and to heal the brokenhearted. Uh, this is the message of the king, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind. Uh, to set at liberty, freedom, those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Uh, y'all, I need y'all to understand something. That the gospel, the gospel, I know this is going to tear your theology up, but I want you to just hang with me. The gospel is not, is a means to an end, but it ain't the end. The gospel, the good news, leads to the establishment of the kingdom of God on earth. But it is not the climax of our mission, but it is the establishment of the movement. Uh, that's why Jesus said, when you pray, pray thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because the earth ought to be governed with the same power that God rules heaven with. When he said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. His intention was that the kingdom of God would be his rule and his reign in the life and hearts of the people of God because God is really after your heart Undef undisputed, undivided, undebated and unanimous under authority that's kingdom y'all the church is just the embassy of the kingdom that's why in Luke 17, Jesus said, now, when they asked the Pharisees where the kingdom of God will come, he answered them, and he said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. He says, nor will they say the kingdom is here or the kingdom is there, for indeed, the kingdom of God lives within you. <laughs> Y'all ain't hearing this. And if you go on to read Luke chapter 4, uh, there's a systematic order that happens in Luke 4 that repeats itself in Luke chapter 9. Because in Luke chapter 4, Jesus is rejected by his own. And he says a prophet is without honor in his own country. Even after he preaches, they reject him. And then after they reject him, he recycles the rejection, goes out. And at the end of Luke 4, he's there healing many sickness and many diseases and curing lord have mercy all kinds of ailments and guess what the same thing happens in luke 9 that happens in luke 4 jesus said listen here anticipate rejection no they ain't gonna accept you but if you recycle it after you proclaim the kingdom you can go out and preach and as long as you preach in the message of jesus and to heal the brokenhearted to set at liberty the captives guess what's gonna happen healing is gonna take place everywhere there's a systematic theology connection between luke chapter 4 at Luke chapter 9 because Jesus said I ain't going to send you out to do nothing I haven't already done come on drop that in the comments for somebody that still sleep at 941 and just tell them listen everything I encountered Jesus already encountered it first there is nothing that I can come up against that Jesus has not already overcome on my behalf are y'all hearing me here and so what is the kingdom message the kingdom message is that we are to compel men to come. <sighs> the mission of the church is to empower and it has always been to deploy. That's why it's more important what we do outside of here than what we do in here. Because it's the embassy as the hub of the church Ah, uh, this, this gathering, this is just the place of deployment. Want to know why we can't shout? Because we've made the place of deployment the place of employment. How come y'all won't say nothing? I know, I know I'm in the Bible now. 
We made the church a marketing tool. And, and you know what Jesus did when in Matthew 21, when they changed over the mission of the house, Jesus in anger came and he flipped over what they were counting on and say, uh, my house shall be called a house of prayer. But y'all done made it a den of thieves. Y'all done made this a place where everybody got an agenda, where everybody got a strategy, where everybody want to make a penny. This is not a place of employment. It's a place of deployment. It's the hub by which the mission of, am I preaching good? It's the hub by which the mission of the church has been established. He says, and by this, you will know how to compel men to come. I really didn't know how this sermon was going to come out when I was writing it, but it's coming out pretty good this morning. I mean, have you ever been there when, when you knew you had a call on your life, but you just didn't have the fruit to prove the work of your hands? Uh, I'm preaching to somebody. Have you ever been there when you knew what you believed, but this, you struggled to convince others that it was powerful enough to change them the way it had changed you? Have you ever been there when you were sure about what God called you to, but with no tangible proof in your hand yet that what he called you to actually worked for your benefit? Oh, shucks, I preach to myself. Well, in order to understand the weight and the power and the brevity of the assignment, you got to understand where the authentic authenticity came from. Jesus had already declared, listen, the spirit of the Lord is upon us. He has anointed us to preach. Look at somebody and say, I've been anointed to do this. I've been anointed to heal the brokenhearted. Y'all ain't hearing me here. I, I got power to proclaim liberty to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind and to set at liberty Everybody in my sphere of influence that has ever been oppressed, depressed, and oppressed. I got that kind of power. Am I talking to anybody beside me that say I got that kind of power? You ain't going to come around me and be depressed. You ain't going to be in my circle. You ain't going to be on my squad and have a negative attitude. You ain't going to be on my squad and be all fearful and, and all reactionary. And as soon as they tell oh, you know, such and such got sick. Oh, well, listen. The last time I read my Bible, it said he was wounded for my transgression and bruised for my iniquity. I ain't going to be shaken by any news that I get because I know greater is he that is in me. Lord, help your boy preach this. Then he that's in the world. All they had to preach was the message of the kingdom. They had to live. With the way it affected people, because whenever you are preaching the kingdom, the fact is everybody ain't gonna receive it. Can I get on out of here on this? And just like Jesus, they had to experience that same rejection. Jesus said, Luke 4, 24, I tell you, a prophet is without honor in his own company. And just like Jesus, they had to keep on preaching. And they had to keep taking authority over demonic spirits. Come on, just lay your hands on somebody you came to church with. Or drop this in the comments and say, I got to keep taking authority over every demonic spirit that comes against me. Uh, and listen, if I keep taking authority over it, healing is going to take place. Y'all ain't here. It is no coincidence that the same thing that happened to Jesus in Luke chapter 4 happens to his disciples in Luke chapter 9. It's systematic theology at its finest. And yet here's the shout. Verse number 6. Put it on the screen and I'll close this. So they set out and they went from village to village proclaiming the kingdom proclaiming the good news. Here it is. And Healing. Uh, let the church say healing. Now, I want you to say it like you really still believe in the power of it. <sighs> hey, you know, they telling us, don't open up the church. Because people that open up the church and wear masks, they don't believe in healing. Uh, but I ain't wearing my mask because I don't believe. I'm wearing my mask because of, because of what I already believe. See, you can't talk to me. I'm wearing it right now because I understand what it's like to be sick. But God gave me another chain. Nobody talking to me here. I don't know what the specific terms of their sermon was. And the text is silent on what, what scriptures they actually preach. But we do have textual evidence that when they preach the kingdom, healing happened. Uh, 
Come on, lay hands on yourself. Drop this in the comments. Say, if I do my part, y'all ain't hearing me here. I trust God to do his part. I, if I keep staying committed to his word. Listen, listen, listen. It doesn't say they lay hands. It don't say that they had altar call. It doesn't say they had praise and worship. It doesn't even say they had a good band of music. And nobody prophesied or spoke in other tongues as the Spirit gave us. They just preached the kingdom. Woo! Woo! And when they preached the kingdom, healing happened. <sighs> and if this text is chronologically authentic, that means there is healing connected to hearing. My God from heaven, last time I read my Bible, the faith that we need to make it, huh, don't come by what we see, but it comes by what we hear. And as long as I can hear the word, hmm, I can be healed by the word. Oh, y'all ain't, ain't hearing this here. Come on, drop this in and say, wherever there's proclamation, there will be manifestation. Wherever there is revelation, there will be restoration. When the word was heard, people got healed. So contextually, we can conclude that there's a correlation between our hearing and our healing. And if you are still hurting, Maybe it's because you've been hard of hearing. <laughs> if you have not been healed, uh, uh, maybe you have not heard. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not heard? Uh, and how can they hear without a preacher? Oh, you don't like me this morning. And how can he preach except he be sent? Yeah, 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 yeah. The more you hear the word, the better chances you have to be healed by the word. Uh, uh, this text proves that real kingdom preaching alone heals people. Uh, uh, kind of like that man that said, you ain't got to go to my house, Jesus. Just speak the word only. And I shall, y'all ain't hear me here. Uh, I know for some of us, you need a little extra attention. You need somebody to say, Pastor, pray for me. But I got about 10 of y'all on this live or in the sanctuary. I make 11 that can say, Pastor, all you got to do is preach the word. Because if I get a word, I'm going to be healed. Uh, now, I got one real last question, Chris then we can get on this train and ride somewhere between E flat and F sharp. Uh, and, 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 and my question is, if all they had was the message of the kingdom and their preaching healed people everywhere, then how come we don't have healing in our preaching and we working with so much more? See, we do get to say he died one Friday. <laughs> Y'all ain't hear me. See, we got Calvary. We got the crucifixion. We got the power of Sunday morning. We got Pentecost where the Holy Ghost came. And yet when we preach, there is no healing. Uh, we're not even talking about no praise and worship, no meet me at the altar prayer, no laying on of hands, no prophecy. The text says when they preached, uh, the good news healing happened. Uh, uh, you know what? I was wrestling with this to and the Holy Ghost uh, uh, just begin to settle my spirit. Because uh, I don't know what the, de the Delta variant numbers are going to be. Uh, I don't know if we're going to have to close in-person worship again. I, I, I don't know how long we're going to have to wear masks and be socially distant. I don't know how long the numbers are going to rise but I do know this one thing long as I keep preaching <laughs> uh, come on lay hands on yourself say I'm going to stick with the word I don't know about you but my testimony is the word has been working for me the word has been working in my life I don't know who I'm preaching to I know a lot of things are changing in this season and there are many uncertainties about our future and I don't know how things are going to be but what ministry is going to look like I don't know what new protocols we're going to have to put in place to make it but all I know 
He said, I'm sticking with the word. I'm sticking with preaching the good news of the kingdom. I'm going to still keep getting up telling you that one Friday on the cross called Calvary, they hung him high. They stretched him wide. See, some of y'all think I say that because I like the, side, the way that it sounds. I like more than how it sounds. I like the fact that he bore a cross that I could not bear. He paid a debt that I could not pay. And he died so that I might live. But bright early Sunday morning, he put one foot on the sea, put another foot on dry land, and said, I I have the power, I got the power to cure sickness and disease. I got the power, look at somebody say, I got the power. Not only do I got the power, but say, and I got authority to drive out demonic spirits. Everything that rise up in my house is subject to the power and the authority that's on my life. Everything that rises up against me is subject to the power and the authority that's in me. Come on, say it one more time. Say, ah, why y'all won't say it? Yeah, the power. Look at somebody say, I'm sticking with the word. Because the more I hear, the more I'll be healed. Because out of everything that has not been working, the one thing that is still working is the word of God. Who am I preaching to? They say, Pastor, that's why I keep pressing my way. Pastor J, that's why I got out of bed this morning. That's why I love don't lie. Because I still believe in the power of the word. Who am I talking to? Come on and shout it with me. Say, if I keep on living the word, then healing will happen in my life. And somebody came to church because you need a healing. Where the people let that say, Pastor, I ain't ashamed to tell you, I need emotional healing. I need mental healing. I need relational healing. I need a physical healing. And if I hear the word, I know I can be healed. He was wounded for my transgression, bruised for my iniquities, the chastisement of my peace was upon him and with his stripes. Look at somebody say, I am healed. Be healed, be delivered, and be set free. Y'all don't want to receive the prophecy. Let me try over here. Lift your hands if you're receiving. Be healed of everything that scarred you. Be delivered from everything that disappointed you. Be set free from everything that had you bound. I don't believe they want it. Let me try over here. Be healed. Be delivered. And be set free. I ain't got nobody that can lift your hands. And so I ain't gonna wait till the battle is over. Then healing is in your house. Be healed. Be delivered. Be set free. Y'all don't want to have no church. Come on, lay hand on yourself. And say, as long as I hear the word, I shall be healed. I shall be whole. I shall be the head and not the tail. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And the that's within me bless his holy name I'm trying to give you the word let the redeem of the Lord say so if you've been healed if he healed your mind you ought to say so if he healed your body you ought to say so if he healed your emotions 
issues. You ought to say so. If he healed your credit report, let me hear you say something. If you took your resume from the bottom of the pile, set it on top of the pile, let me hear you say something. Lift up your heads. All ye gates, be ye lifted up. Ye everlasting doors, and say, I am healed. Y'all ain't saying it. I said, I am healed. Come on, it only works when we all do it together. The Bible said, lay your hand on yourself and say, I am healed. I am healed. I am delivered. I am delivered. I am set free. I am set free. I am healed. I am healed. I am delivered. I am delivered. I'm set free. I'm set free. I'm set free. I'm set free.
you got your mask on. But if you really got power and authority, throw your hands up and say, I've been delivered. You can have it if you want it. But you got to declare. Lift your hands, lift your hands. Got my liberty, I've been healed. I got my liberty, man. Yeah. I've been touched, I've been healed, I've been delivered. <laughs> and I don't know who I'm preaching to on this live, or maybe you're in the sanctuary. And you need to be reminded, listen, that you can be healed too. Listen, if I'm preaching to you this morning, don't let me just preach all this time and not offer the plan of salvation to you. In a real sense, I'm offering you the opportunity. First of all, receive Jesus Christ into your life. Secondarily, if you don't have a church to be connected to, don't let nobody tell you that the church is irrelevant and insignificant in this season. You need a church home like you ain't never needed one before. You need a place of shelter and security where you can hear the word of God and be operative. And listen, we've made becoming a part of our family so simple. If you're in the sanctuary, you don't have a church, I'm inviting you to be a part of ours. All you got to do is text join KCC to the number 69922. Don't put it off another Sunday. You, you know this is the place that God has pricked your heart. Go on here and make the connection. Because not only do you need salvation and you need fellowship, but you need a family. And you need a pastor. Somebody that can speak into your life on a regular basis. Somebody that can cover you in prayer and faith. Somebody that can be an example for you and your family. You need that in your life. And I'm praying for those of you who are even watching online this morning. Listen, I want you to be healed. <laughs> I want you to be delivered. I want you to be set free. And I want you to know you can have it if you want it. But you got to declare it. So pray with me now. Father, in Jesus' name. I pray for every person that's in this place or watching online. God, don't let the production of our worship take away the sensitivity and the spirituality of it. Somebody need to make a decision right now. And I'm praying even if they're in their households, as that link is being dropped in the comments right now, I, I pray that as salvation, salvation is being made, as simple as the click of a button, I pray right now that the power of your word will be made manifest in the life of every believer. Huh. And I believe that we're going to have liberty because as long as we can hear the word, we can be healed by the word. We make that declaration in Jesus' name. Amen. God touch. God touch me. Be Set my soul. He set my soul free. Come on. My heart is I'm whole again. I'm whole again. No change. No change. No Come on, say it. Got my liberty. I am here. Come on, say it if you believe it. Go ahead and declare it. Yes, 
to my circumstances. But I'm healed. I had a few disappointments. But I'm healed. I got a few scars, but I am healed. Come on, if you're watching online, drop it in the comments and declare it and say, I'm healed.
to them because her grandmother just went home to be with the Lord. And they dancing with her because they figured if she can dance in her grief, then they can dance and help her in her strength. Look at somebody say, I ain't got to dance all by myself. I got somebody that can praise him with me. You can have it if you want it. 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 But you have to declare it. Come on, put that in the comments and say, you can have it if you want it. But you have to declare it. Come on. If you declare a thing, that's what the Bible says, that God will establish it. That out of the mouth of two wit or three witnesses, let every word be established. Hallelujah. Be healed. Be delivered. Be set free. In Jesus' name.